22 degrees Celsius. So we have a 1.49 kilogram block of iron. It's heated to 155. How much energy would be released as it cooled to 22C? First thing you do is write the equation. Okay, that is worth one point. It is worth one point to identify the correct equation to use. Now, early in the year, we don't have many equations. This is the only one. But as the year goes on, you're going to get more and more and more and more and more equations. You can always look up an <laughs> equation. Okay, in science, you can look up equations. But you can't look up when to use it. Okay? You can have a toolbox full of wrenches, <coughs> um, channel lock wrench, pliers, needle nose pliers, um, hammer, claw hammer, tap hammer. You can have all these tools, but when do you use which one? Under what circumstances? The old, the old saying is the right tool for the right job. Same thing. You can look up equations, but when do you use the right equation? For which, for which problem? So one point to identify. Then what I want you to do is to write down all the information that you got. So do we know our mass? Yes. Yes, we do. 1.49 kilograms. Do we know our initial temperature. Yes, we do. 155 Celsius. Is it in Fahrenheit? No. Um, not in this class and not in this textbook, but sometimes they'll give you the temperature in Fahrenheit to trick you and then you've got to convert it to, to Celsius. But in this book, they never give it to you in Fahrenheit. And the same thing with my tests. It will always be in Celsius. But when you go to college, they might try to trick your breath by putting it in Fahrenheit. Okay. Do we know the final temperature? Yes. 22C. Do we know the amount of energy released? No. That's what we're trying to find. Do we know the specific heat of, are we dealing with water? Are we dealing with cadmium sulfide? No. We're dealing with iron. So we need to know the specific heat of <coughs> iron, Fe is iron. Where are we going to find it? Well, lucky for us, we have a packet of appendices. And you can look it up in appendix P1. Specific heat of iron is Now we have all the information we need to solve it. Okay? So Q we're trying to find. Mass, uh oh. What's wrong with the mass? It's in kilograms. In kilograms. Sam, it must be in grams. Do not be fooled. Alright? So Little of unit analysis here. One kilogram is a thousand grams. So one thousand four hundred ninety grams. T 
final minus t initial. So 22 Celsius minus 155 Celsius <coughs> times the specific heat, which is 0 0.4494 joules grams degree Celsius. Of course, we put units on all of our numbers. To do otherwise would just be silly. First thing we do is our subtraction. Now you do the subtraction, you stop, then you do sig figs. So I'm going to do 22 minus 155 There's my guess, there's my guess. So my guess is in the ones place. So I'm going to round to the ones. Do not lose your negative sign. That's a place where people commonly make mistakes, Elizabeth. They lose that negative. Now I can plug it back into the equation. 1,490 grams times negative 133 Celsius times 0.4494 joules per gram degrees Celsius. So the grams will cancel with the grams. The Celsius cancels with the Celsius. Does anything cancel with the joules? No. no. What do we measure energy in? Joules. joules. Okay. So you always want to just kind of double check yourself. If your units don't cancel correctly, then you, need, then you know you did something wrong. If at the end of the problem, your mass is in Celsius, something's wrong. If at the end of the problem, your specific heat is grams, you know something is wrong. So now we can multiply. And I get negative 89,057. And then we apply sig figs. 3, 3, 4. So we'll round it to 3 sig figs. It becomes negative 89,100 joules. Again, this negative sign is important. It means the energy is being released. Okay? It's like the difference between saying you're plus $100 versus minus $100. That's a big difference. Anytime it is negative, it means you are losing energy. Energy is being released. Okay? If it was positive, it means energy is being gained or absorbed. Yep, Jerry. Wait, so if you circle the negative 89,100 joules release, uh, wouldn't that be like 89,100 joules gained just because we use a negative with a negative, so to speak? No. No. Mm -hmm. um, it'll be written. So, now, here's the thing about science. Don't ever accuse science people of being, you know, great writers. In this, negative 89,000 joules released means the same thing as this, 89,100 joules released. 
the released means you're losing it. And therefore, the sign in front of it should be negative. In some books, though, they will save the money and not print the ink and just write 89,100 released. They expect you to understand that there's actually a negative sign out there. Okay? Could you put but you should put both. Okay. Put both to be clear. You know, to me, don't be explicit. You're losing 89,100 joules of energy. Let's say you forget to put release, so you have a negative. That's this is the important thing. Yeah, put that negative. Yeah. Put that negative. Okay. Um, but I like to um, reinforce it by writing the word released, because sometimes people see, see negative as, as like it's being destroyed. Okay. You cannot destroy energy. If you have negative, it means it's just going someplace else. And I always use the analogy of, of money. So if I have a dollar and I am losing it and I give it to Ryan, I'm negative one dollar, he's positive one dollar. So I'm negative, he's positive. Was the dollar destroyed? No, it just went someplace else. And now Ryan can give it to Amanda. And then he'd be negative a dollar, and Amanda would be positive a dollar. So it's the same thing with energy, okay? It's not like the energy was destroyed. It just went somewhere else. The bricks lost it. The bed gained it, okay? But you never, ever, ever destroy energy. It just flows from one place to another. And for those of you watching in TV land, I put a disclaimer on destroying energy. Yes, I know you can change it in matter, but we haven't gotten there yet. Okay. Moving on. Uh, you always got to put a disclaimer whenever you say always, always, always. There's, a, there's very, very rarely is there always in science. science. There's always an exception and an exception to that exception. Okay. Um, now, here we solve for Q, <coughs> but we could have solved for mass. We could have solved for final temperature. We could have solved for initial. We could solve for any of those. So let's try a trickier one. Can make this one up. Uh, 50 grams of iron at 115 degrees Celsius is dropped into, uh, let's make it easy on ourselves, 100 grams of water. At 25 degrees Celsius, what is the final temperature of the water? So I got 50 grams of iron at 115 Celsius. It's dropped into 100 grams of water at 25 degrees Celsius. What is the final temperature of the water? So here a picture might be helpful. We've got a, a beaker. It's filled with water. How much water? 100 grams. What is the initial temperature of the water? 25 degrees Celsius. We're going to 
going to drop a piece of iron in here. How much iron? 50 grams. What's the initial temperature of the iron? 115 degrees Celsius. Do we know the specific heat of iron? Yes, we do. We just used it in that last problem, right, uh, Kyle? 0.4494 joules per gram degrees Celsius. Do we know the specific heat of water? Yes, we do. 4.184 <coughs> joules per gram degrees Celsius. One thing we don't know is what is the final temperature of the water? 